Do not go gently into that dark night. Old age should burn and rave at the end of day. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. We gather this day to celebrate a millennium's old story about an itinerant teacher, one rabbi, Jesus of Nazareth, who with his students came to offer a message that would connect the oppressed and the imprisoned, the downtrodden and the hopeless, to the God who had given them life without price, without price of assent or belief, without payment or duty. And the news was too good. And so they took his life. And we gather on this day called good for one purpose. And that is to remember, to, to put back together within ourselves the truth that this is not a story told of people we have never known in places we have never lived, in times we cannot understand. This is a story about us one and all, about the invitation to say goodbye. Let us enter into a celebration in solemn remembrance of this great story which is ours this day. We'll join our voices together singing number 340, though gathered here to celebrate. It is a fearful thing to love what death can touch. A fearful thing to love, hope, dream, to be. To be and to lose. A thing of fools, this, a holy thing. A holy thing to love. For your life has lived within me. Your laugh once lifted me. Your word was gift to me. To remember this brings painful joy. Tis a human thing, love, 
a holy thing, to love what death can touch. thing to love what death can touch. And if we have lived very long at all, we know this intimately, as if it was the stuff of which we are made. To have loved with a whole heart and lost. To experience joy gathered up in our hands and witness it slip away like so much sand. We cannot avoid the very certainty that all that has been created will come to an end. The only question for us as people 
journeying in a divinely human life is how shall you dance with the end of days? How might we practice with the unavoidable truth that all good someday rests? How is it that we might transform death, a commodity in our culture placed in corners and dark and hushed circles? To refrain from making it the enemy, something to be avoided or pretended away, and rather invite the chaos and the dark that precedes the light to be our vital and sacred teacher. There lies within each of us a deep human need to resolve the tattered threads that are the end of dreams, the dashing of hopes, the loss of direction, the unkind and the evil, the demise of relationship or careers once vibrant, the despair of depression, and for almost all of us who have been given the gift of living for some time, the mourning of a human life, once joined with ours in love, to which we have a need to say goodbye. Death comes, and it pricks our heart. And I see, friends, that you have brought your hearts with you this day. And they are beautiful, and they are broken hearts. And if you are here, I imagine it is your heart that has guided you to this old story, which is not old at all amidst a certain kind of darkness towards the story of Good Friday. Good Friday is only one of many of the vignettes which make up a movement, an arc of living that begins in Lent with the spark of an idea that might bring life and life abundant and travels through the experience of our human condition. And on this day lands at the point at which we recognize that not even the great among us can avoid the end of days. The story calls us here to sit in the dark on a strange day called good, each with nothing more than the opportunity to honor the dark place within an archetypal story that leads to a moment called Easter. And it is Good Friday that invites us not to pretend away the dark places, to not let Easter come without the necessity of the great story's promise that before there was light, there was chaos and darkness. Good Friday invites us, like the disciples of Jesus, to become powerfully close to our own sense of loss, to put our hands on the thorns and the rope, the hammer and the nails, the deception of our own loving and losing. But where is the good? Where is the good in Good Friday? The word good in Good Friday is peculiar to English and unfortunately rather unhelpful to our understanding of the practice and the opportunity that is before us this day. There are many in our culture who see no no problem in calling this day good. Those who believe that the violent murder of Jesus of Nazareth was and is a good thing because it gets us something an assurance of heaven. 
But there are other ways to understand the good of Good Friday, ways that do not involve the twisted idea that we need to destroy another in order to save ourselves. The ancient root of this English word good describes a practice known as care and woe. Or more simply, the act of mourning. Today is not good deal for me at the expense of someone else Friday, but the Friday of a careful and woeful mourning. Our, our culture has largely lost this practice, the practice of intentional mourning, the ritualized gatherings and private practices that invite us to intentionally weave death and loss into the fabric of our living. We need only look to our Jewish brothers and sisters, those from whom Jesus of Nazareth would have learned his scriptures to recover for ourselves something of what we have lost. Our Jewish brothers and sisters have kept alive now for three millennium a practice known as avalut, which is simply the intentional and deep presence kept among the living in honor of the dead. A reaching out to be with the living amidst the reality of dying so that we can safely touch what we have lost, begin to embrace its deeper meaning and truth for our living, to remember that if we want light, we will need to look deeply in and through the dark. To mourn is not to run away from the paradoxically white, hot, and cold, dark crucible of loss. It is to dance carefully with it. The alchemists called this the soul Niger, the black sun. In this darkness, the alchemists teach, distilled by despair is found a precious brilliance, and within that our essential nature. In true mourning, death and loss are not afflictions to be medicated, but rather divine opportunities to be practiced. Mourning does not require that we wallow in the darkness for the sake of a deserved suffering. The one whose story we celebrate this day, Jesus of Nazareth, would never tolerate the idea that one is to suffer as some kind of penalty for his unjust end. And so our intention this day, as people who make it their lives' intention to recover the ancient stories and to practice with them so that life and life abundant might be the fruit of our work, our intention today is to reach out by reaching in, to touch the part of love, the part of God that is loss and ending, and not to pretend away the pain with promises of eternity and afterlife, but to face or better yet actually put our hands literally into the fear and uncertainty and anger and sadness and darkness on purpose in a way that honors the good of care and woe. This is what Good Friday welcomes us to. I don't ask you to turn death into a rose garden. No, I ask you to see what is really here. I ask you to take time with whatever loss or dying it is that you find in our meditations this, this day, and to take that first step of many to welcome this story as an opportunity for greater life. The power of the gospel is not in overcoming or dominating or becoming victorious over the wrongful death of good people. 
I do not know a God who murders in order to save. But I do know that the darkness of this Friday has made a unique invitation to all who gather here, a message central to our human experience, a journey that requires remembering the literal putting back together of our beloved nature amidst the truth of our impermanence. It is a human thing, a holy thing, to love what death can touch. My friends, do not shy away from the soul Niger, from the black sun, from the endings that are essential to our living. I invite you this day to greet death with intention so that it is no longer a stranger apart to be feared, but a pathway towards greater intimacy with the one who has given you life. May it be so. And amen. chose the voices of women to lead us to this moment of contemplative prayer, followed by a hymn which this day I invite you to listen rather than sing. Our choir will sing a hymn over you before I invite you to come forward to practice with these elements. In ancient days, when a prophet would find himself in that place we all know when we do not know what to do. When death or loss or confusion are the only certainties, they would come into the center of the square and place themselves on sackcloth as we have placed here. And they would take ash as we have brought here a reminder of the simplicity of their creation. And they would cover themselves in the ash so as to remember to remember that death was not separate from life, that it was the very confusion, the very darkness, the very ending and loss and sorrow that would indeed lead them 
towards the miracle they sought. And more modern practices of this have brought with them these two lights, these two lights which bring to them a sacred space, the first light being a light of remembrance of the ancient story of one Jesus who came to bring a good message which the powers would not accept. And passing through this space, a candle of keeping. This is the candle that reminds each of us that this is not an old story which is not our ours, but indeed, this is our story, your story, to make real this day. And between these two candles sit the ash and a vision of a hope of Lent that many of you have helped to create these last seven weeks. It is the story of a blank canvas which invited a conversation with the relationships of our life whether those relationships are with people or places or ways of being that once lived and loved with us, this story must pass through the veil of darkness which now conceals its original beauty. It must be said goodbye to in the form we all thought was perfect so that it might truly take its place in the great story. And this is what I invite you now to join together in doing, is to find your place, to literally welcome into your heart a person or a place in time or a way of life and living that is no more. If it's helpful to you in the silence that follows, I invite you to literally put your hand upon your heart and to find the heartbeat. And as you breathe and remember in a desire to pass through mystery into the keeping of your own story alive, I welcome you to find that person or place or way of life that has been lost and literally bring it into your own beating heart so that that which is no more can walk with you. Let's take that time now in silence.
There is a difference between farewell and goodbye. In the ancient world in which Jesus lived, one lived, one said farewell to the friend whom you expected to see again in the flesh. And you said goodbye only to those with whom you needed to say a truly good bye, for you would not see them again. I invite you as a part of this Good Friday service to bring that holy instant which I pray you found in the silence of your beating heart, that place where your living body made space for one no longer with us. It is indeed that moment in which their presence became real to you in your living body that I suggest you have touched the divine. And so I welcome you to come forward as you are able and as you have need. To bring forward within your heart and hands that one to whom goodbye would be a first step towards greater life. To take in your hands the ash symbolic of the simplicity of your creation and the end of their days and to cast it into the mystery towards the hope of a new perfection that you cannot possibly know on this side of goodbye. So as the music plays, I invite you to come forward one at a time to take as much ash as would be a blessing to you and to scatter it amongst this good people towards a mystery which is certainly coming, coming for you and for me. May it be so.
and as you go, to go in peace, but to take with you the, the opportunity not to let Easter come too soon. Might you indeed share a meal or a prayer or a moment with the stars tonight with the one to whom you said goodbye, that teacher or friend, enemy or foe, father, mother, ancestor, place or time. Take that time to be truly with your goodbye for them. Easter shall come soon enough. Go in peace.